Welcome to the Big Heart Business Show. My name is Carrie Shepard, business strategist, philanthropist, and believer. I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs be more, do more, and give more beyond their business, and to do it with more heart and less hustle. Each week on the show, I'll be here with a message or interview from a powerhouse entrepreneur that has built their business by giving back. Together, we will inspire you, fuel you, and get you going with simple action steps and strategies to grow your purpose-driven business. Our philosophy here is that we can change the world one big heart business at a time. Let's get started. This is episode number 16 of the Big Heart Business Show. And today I am excited to be talking to Reese Floyd Thompson. Hey, Reese. Hi. Yay. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly tell our audience a little bit about you. Reese is a professional digital marketer, businesswoman, and author and founder of Create Good Marketing. She's founder of Prisoners, Wives, Girlfriends, and Partner, and creator of Reese's PCs. <laughs> Reese, aka Digital Wonder Woman, is on a mission to teach non marketers and do gooders how to use digital marketing to create good in their lives and businesses. She specializes in the I don't know jack about marketing entrepreneur looking to change the world. <laughs> Reese is one of 14 mompreneurs featured in the upcoming book, A Woman's Worth The Struggles and Triumphs of a Successful Mompreneur. She's a wife, mother, idealist addicted to thrifting and Netflix, and a super cool chick. <laughs> I love your bio. And we were just chatting before we hit record. And I mean, I really don't think our businesses could be more aligned. So I'm so excited yeah. to get to know more about you and kind of how you got here. So I'd love for you just to kind of open up and share with our audience a little bit more um, about that journey. Sure, absolutely. You know, I came to entrepreneurship in a, um, a really weird way, but I kind of knew very early on that um, I was not meant to do a nine to five, but that's all I knew. So, you know, that's what I did. And every job that I would have, I would hit a wall and like, oh my God, I can't, I'm tired of this. Let me, I want to do something different. So um, I was kind of forced to kind of get my journey started when I um, about 14 years ago now, my husband um, was sentenced to prison for 12 and a half to 25 years. And me not knowing anything about that world, um, I had no idea how expensive it was. Mm. And I um, had the desire to keep my family together. So in order to do that, that meant that I would have to, you know, pay for the privilege, the phone calls and mm. visitations and all of that. When I got my very first phone bill and it was more expensive than my rent, I had a oh problem. Oh gosh. <laughs> it was very expensive. It's like 450 for the first minute and a dollar for every additional minute for a 15 minute call. It's very expensive. <laughs> it's very gosh, when you're I missing had no your idea. Order, yeah, it's really expensive. So during that time, I launched side hustle after side hustle to try to keep um, my family afloat, keep myself afloat. Mm. And it was, it was here where I was starting to learn that this is really the life that I want. I want to call my own shots because I'm a horrible employee. I really am. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> I really wanted to call my own shots. So, um, during the time I had started a nonprofit for women like me and um, it was going, you know, really well. And then um, I thought, you know, it wasn't monetized though. And then I keep hearing people say, find your passion, find your passion. So, okay, well, I have a passion for digging through the trash and repurposing furniture. So I did that. Oh, that wasn't working. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, find your passion, find your passion. So, okay, I have a passion for graphics and stuff. So I started doing t-shirts and it's like, Oh, that's not working. So what is my passion? <laughs> and then for me, it clicked. My passion is the thing that I was doing every single day, mm -hmm. which was nonprofit marketing at that time, which included a lot of social media. And so I'm like, duh, it's right here in front of you. This is the thing that you could do all the time. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to dig through the trash. It's right here. And so that's how. <laughs> Always a positive when you don't have to do it. I know, right? 
a little and thing. So, um, Create Good Marketing was born out of that to teach people how to use digital marketing um, to create good. Good being the operative word in that um, in that title because it, it was born out of having a business with purpose and helping businesses with purpose learn how to market. Mm, love that. Yeah. Wow, that is quite the journey. There's like so many things in there I'm going to ask you like 20 questions about. But we're going to stay focused. Okay. And um, I love that you bring up the fact that your first business, you didn't just have this idea and like, oh, boom, I'm going to have this great successful business mm -hmm. and really understanding and knowing that it's a journey. And so I just wonder, like, as you were going through that process of kind of figuring out, okay, what is my passion? Okay, that's not it. This is, maybe I'll try this one. Maybe I'll try this one. Mm -hmm. What was your mindset when you were going through that and how, what, what kept you going to, to keep trying and, and kind of reiterating what that vision and purpose for you looked like? Right. Well, one of the things that kept me going was the fact that I was in this relationship that was really expensive. Mm -hmm. And the idea that I would lose my family to this um, was a huge, a huge why. Um, when people tell you to find your why, that was the why for me. This was, that was it. But as I was going through the process of moving from one idea to the next idea, I realized that that why, though it was very important, it wasn't really the thing that was sustaining me. It was the, the thought that I wanted to have my own business. Mm. And I was going to figure out a way to have my own business. And okay, this didn't work and this didn't work. But at the end of the day, I knew that I had what it took. I've seen people doing it and I'm thinking they are not any more special than I, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that kept me going that I wasn't going to allow myself to have any regrets about not doing what I felt I really needed to do. That's fantastic. And um, obviously you're a mother. How many children do you have? I have two. two. I have two kids. I have a boy and a girl. Yes. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and I just think um, I'm not a mother, but um, mm -hmm. I know, I mean, I can imagine from a mother's perspective, you know, really thinking about keeping your family together, but also on top of that, really the lessons that you're showing your kids as you're going through this process, um, mm -hmm. did, did they have any kind of feedback or were, were you sharing with them like the lessons that you were going through as you were starting these different businesses? Well, um, our situation is a little different. I, you know, in full disclosure, I am not their birth mother. Um, so at the time that I met them, they were already kind of like young adults. And um, when I was going through this process, um, my son in particular, um, he really wanted to be um, a journalist because he saw me doing like a podcast at the time. And um, understanding that if I say that I'm going to do it, then I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what this situation is, I made a commitment to a person and this is what marriage is. It's either it's up and down, it's good and bad. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for me to have this business, it's the same thing. I said, I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. And to hear him now, older say things to me um to have a focus that if you say you're going to do it that's what you're going to do to know that that comes from me it's like oh <laughs> it's the best thing ever <laughs> Proud mom moment right yes <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome yeah i mean i can imagine you know just being a mother you know being able to be that example and i would imagine that's like another layer of kind of accountability uh, right. It really, yeah, it really is. And, you know, there was so many, we were, like I said, I, I am their stepmom, but we, you know, we don't use that term, but you have this idea that you're coming in. There is another person who actually physically gave you life. And I'm thinking that I have to be this Pinterest mom and all of these kinds of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, I'm trying to keep my life together. <laughs> and then I have to add on these, you know, have to bake you cookies every day. I'm like, that's not really going to work. <laughs> the yeah. reality is 
that, you know, I live my life trying to be a good person. And if you can see that I'm trying to be a good person, that you will understand that sometimes good people make mistakes mm -hmm. and that good people can still, you know, carry on and do the best that they can. And that may or may not include a batch of cookies. So. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. Yes. The, you know, just being authentic and not only with your family, but then also in your business too. And I think, mm -hmm. You know, I really subscribe to the theory of the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. So if you're parenting right. that way and you're being a mother that way, then I think that translates into your business. So, right. um, so I know you have a really, you know, a big heart for, you know, teaching people, not non-marketers, as you mm -hmm. say, I don't mm -hmm. know Jack about marketing, which yes. I love that term. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, so I'd love to hear maybe a little bit about what that looks like as far as if somebody is saying, okay, yeah, I don't really love marketing. I don't know anything about it. What are some kind of the behind the scenes um, secrets that helped you launch your business and, or what do you help your clients with as they're um, building their businesses? Okay. So I, one of the biggest things that I have noticed with people is that when you say that you teach digital marketing, the first thing, what they hear is that you teach social media. And I'm like, okay, that's one aspect of it, but it's not the whole enchilada, you know? So um, I started in the social world as well. And I understand that you can be an online business, but you can be a business that uses online marketing, which is two separate things. Um, so one thing that I help my clients with the most is the thing that they're tripping over the most. And so when we start working together, if the social media is what's driving you crazy, then we start with the social media. Mm -hmm. um, because I teach you that it's, it's a traffic source. It's not a be all to end all. And I teach you, you know, understanding that when you post on social media, you need to move this traffic. You don't just post it just to be posting. And then once we can master that one piece, you teach them the other pieces and show them how it all aligns. Digital marketing is, is simple in concept, but it's overwhelming for people who don't have a clue what it is. Mm -hmm. And marketing in general, you, I, I'm floored by the amount of people who still um, think that if you build it, they will come. And if you put out a sign that says you're open for business, that people rush in and that they don't understand that marketing is a must if people don't know that you exist you can't make money mm -hmm. and that's kind of understanding marketing is not a bad word it's just you need to tell people who you are and tell them how great you are and let's make this money yeah yeah <laughs> totally i think marketing scares so many people so it sounds like kind of just giving kind of re-educating people about what it is and then how mm -hmm. to use it and then creating that strategy it, it right. makes sense right. to kind of do it that way so when you termed the coin, you know, create good marketing, can you tell us a little bit more about what that means for you and kind of what's, what's at the heart of, of good marketing? Okay. So it was, it kind of, you know, turned into this, um, this pun of sorts. Um, for me, the create good was doing things that, have a purpose either for you. Or, well, I don't, I don't do work that don't have a purpose for me, but some people do, <laughs> but doing work that creates a greater good in the world. And so that is the, the ultimate definition of it. Whatever it is that you do, that it creates some sort of, of fuzzy for somebody else <laughs> in the world. Mm. And then the second definition of it was just taking the pieces of marketing and doing it in a way where it, um, it makes sense and that it creates the framework for you to be the vehicle, for it to be the vehicle for you to actually create that good. So the marketing, um, the practical part of the marketing is created in such a good way that your message gets out to create the ultimate good. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. That's amazing. And so it sounds like kind of from your own nonprofit, you kind of figured out that was one of your, your passions. And then you started this. Mm -hmm. um, do you work with nonprofits only or are they a big part of your business? And, and what does that kind of mix look like for you? 
I, when I started, I wanted to work exclusively with nonprofits. Um, I have since evolved to work with any kind of business, mm. um, but nonprofits in general, because of what they do have, I mean, they will always have a soft spot in my heart. Mm. I just love the idea that an organization can exist to um, transform people's lives in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so I, if I'm not working with a nonprofit, I work with companies that have some sort of social mission. And it doesn't have to be a huge social mission. It could be as simple as um, having something that means something like this one company that I work with, her daughter was born with cerebral palsy and thus she create, create, created a business for clients with cerebral palsy. That to me is like, okay, that's cool. Or you have something that means so much to you that out of that passion, something of good was born. Mm -hmm. And that just, you know, just gives me such a feeling that I can't even describe. And I'm sure you understand what I mean. A hundred percent. And, you know, I think too, as we talk kind of about good, you know, I think there's so many good people out there that want to do more good, but no, don't necessarily know how to do it, or they don't know how to create a business around it. Mm -hmm. And I know one of the things that I'm working more and more with my clients is to have that purpose. You know, it's not about just making, you know, X amount of dollars, but it's also what can we do with the dollars that we're, you know, that we're creating in our business. And so sometimes right. for me, it is about like, kind of matching, like, okay, you, you want to make X amount of dollars, how, you know, how much of that do you want to give away? And then finding that cause or that charity or that purpose, if you will, that is in alignment with them. And so I'm just wondering, do you, do you do that with any of your clients or do you feel like most of the time they come to you and they've already got that kind of in alignment? Yes, I absolutely do. I, um, I tell every client that I work with that I don't take you on if one, I don't believe in what you're doing and not, not in the sense that I'm, you know, judging, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it has to mean something to me as well because I'm, I'm spending my time on it. Right. So, um, it has to be a passion that I can get behind. And if I don't believe that I can actually help the client in any way, then I won't take that on either. Right. Um, so it's understanding a lot of my clients get that correlation between making money and using that money for something else other than your bank account. Right. Um, and I think it's aligned that way because I just don't take on anything else. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, it's kind of, you know, I, I am not going to use my skills to make somebody else rich for the purpose of being rich. And mm -hmm. that was, you know, kind of part of the issues that I was having with working a nine to five. Um, yes, you know, I'm getting a paycheck, but I'm not gonna, you know, spend 50, 60, 70 weeks, you know, 50 hours a week to try to determine, you know, what paper goes in the printer that no one cares about kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> that's not creating, anything other than increasing someone else's bottom line. And I was like, that kind of energy, it's all I have. And that has to be reserved for work. That means something. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And so I wanted to touch on one thing. So you talk obviously about a lot of marketing, mm -hmm. uh, specifically the digital marketing, what that looks like, whether it's an online business or an offline business. And mm -hmm. uh, I have, always grown up around, you know, uh, a father who was an entrepreneur and, you know, always loved sales. And we talk about sales and that's what drives a company. And, um, there seems to always be this kind of like turmoil between, you know, a marketing department and a sales department. And, mm -hmm. you know, as I have had the opportunity to work on both sides and now in, in my business teaching on both sides, I just was wondering what your kind of philosophy or feedback is in regards to how to sales really work in with the good marketing that you're doing? Mm -hmm. Sales is also the other dirty word aside from marketing. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> when people think sales, you know, we have all of these ideas of what sales is. It's kind of, you know, ultimately forcing people to buy stuff that they don't want, which is not true. <laughs> but the way that I look no, no. at sales, um, the word sales as it relates to what I just said, kind of making people buy stuff that they don't want. Um, I look at that, that it's making a sale. It's all about um, 
the relationship and the energy and the alignment between the product and that person's need. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, emotion plays a huge role in the things that we buy and the things that we feel about ourselves. Even when we buy a pair of shoes or, or whatever, that is, that's emotional. It means something to us about who we think that we are. So when I look at sales and marketing together, sometimes depending on how it's done, it can almost be interchangeable, but marketing is just making sure that that messaging is so good that by the time it gets in front of the client that it's meant for, it's just a transaction. It's not anything where you have to convince. If I have to convince you for my services, that's not good. That's telling me that's not working. So um, it's just a relationship. Mm -hmm. Marketing and sales, it's just a relationship. Oh, I love that you said that. That's, that's spot on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's important just to share because I think you're exactly right. I think sales and marketing um, both are, are things that a lot of, especially women entrepreneurs, are just scared of, you know, and especially mm -hmm. when you start talking about people that have big hearts, that want to do good in the world, that want to either run or give back to nonprofits, you know, they're run by, you know, that and, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that you've got to get your message out there and you've got to you know, it is about showing people what it is that you have and allowing them and helping them make that decision. So um, I totally agree. The better job you can do at marketing, the easier it is to do sales. So, right. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, so we've touched on obviously what you've done with your own nonprofit, with the work mm -hmm. that you're doing with nonprofits, but I'd love mm -hmm. to hear a little bit more um, as an entrepreneur, as the CEO of your business, what does your internal give back plan look like? I um, partner with an organization um, called Samaritan House. It is the, um, the largest domestic violence um, shelter in, this, in our state of Virginia. And um, I used to uh, work there, <laughs> one of those okay. horrible employee moments. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I worked there for a number of years and I helped to um, rebrand the company. And domestic violence is just one of those things that's, that's very um, close to my heart in the sense that I can't stand the idea that anyone would ever be hurt in that way, mm -hmm. especially betrayed by the people who say that they love us or love you. Um, so for me, when I um, make money or when I um, do anything that brings in, you know, coins, I guess, <laughs> I always give back to Samaritan House. It's um, either through... Um, uh, Clothing donations, which they have a, a thrift store. All of our thrift store here is, I don't know if that works wherever you are. All mm -hmm. of our thrift stores here have to be connected to a charity. Mm -hmm. So, um, Ooh, cool. yeah. And so we are able to um, give back um, all kinds of things. And the, and the thrift stores are amazing, the ones that are run by Samaritan House. And so we give back all of our old clothes. We give back everything. Every season, we are like packing up stuff to give back. Mm -hmm. And then, um, when I bring in um, a certain threshold of money, I write checks to Samaritan House. So it just kind of depends on um, what, what I have at the time. But every month I, I try to give them something because I really, really believe in what they're doing in the, in the lives that they're changing. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and a lot of times I ask, you know, our guests, how did you decide on, on what organization to... Mm -hmm partner with or to give back to. And I like that your journey was, you know, really understanding the inner workings of, of the organization. And then obviously having a heart for what, what it is that they do. Mm -hmm. And then the other part of that is, you know, finding different ways to give back. I mean, obviously financially is always great, but also to be able to give back, um, you know, with your resources, um, mm -hmm. is, is awesome. And right. the fact that that's, you know, in turn giving back to the charity. So that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about, you know, how we kind of both help clients kind of get to that place and understanding, you know, how they can give back. And I'm just curious if you have any, um, any tips or strategies you could share with our audience in regards to, you know, figuring out what that looks like or being able to figure out, you know, how they can make an impact through and with their business. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, this was a practice that I used to follow. I don't do it as much, but maybe I should. 
um, one of the things, um, requirements that I had to work with me was that um, a client had to be willing to give back at least um, $25, either monetary or in supplies to some charity of their choice. Mm. Um, I, you know, had that as a requirement for um, joining my Facebook group. And um, I had several people who, who were willing to do it, even people who weren't clients of mine who um, gave back. And I um, asked clients, because they know, a lot of them know that I'm, I'm really, I, I'm a big heart person. It is who I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am the cry at commercials kind of girl. So oh it's, it's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. totally. And I often ask clients whether or not, even if they're not giving back to a charity, how it is that they are planning to use their success. Um, or their money and not in a personal way, just kind of what kind of good does this money or this business represent to you and how can you help someone in turn get where you're going? Um, I've worked with a couple of coaches and this really works well in their world because they're able to take their lives and their work and empower other people. Mm -hmm. Um, I've worked with a couple of gyms who have um, giving away like two weeks free when, you know, they were adamant about discounts to help people. Um, like it doesn't have to be like a huge thing, Mm -hmm. but just one little thing that leads to something else that leads to something else. It's just giving back in some way because we're all, we're all blessed. And in that blessing, the little bit that we think we have is always more than what someone else has had, someone else has. Mm -hmm. And just giving um, with the intent of not having anything back in return is like a heart blessing or, you know, it's like a kiss from the heart that you just can't, um, you can't, there's no price for it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I like that too. Just giving like some, de- I like tangible, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the how girl. Like I want to be like, okay, how can I get back more? How can I, you know, put more heart into my business? And I like that you bring up some of those just like $25. What can you do? Yeah you know, the effort of it and just challenging yourself sometimes, because I think mm-hmm. honestly, sometimes it's easier to me just to write a check and yeah. be, okay, I've got to take time, you know, and I think for different people, one or the other can be more challenging at different times, right? Mm-hmm. right. Um, that maybe it's more challenging to actually carve out an hour a week um, or, mm-hmm. you know, 30 minutes a week. I know we just had an ask at our church um, to, to help with third graders to go and read to them. And I thought, Oh, do I really have time to do that? You know, that, that was my first like thought process in my head. Right. And so I think that's a good challenge just to kind of figure out, you know, how to, to be able to be able to just step out. And, and again, like we said before, you know, I think the, the return that you get on, you know, when you give, or especially I think when you get out in and actually spend your time and um, you have that connection, you know, to me, that, right. I always get so much more back than I ever give. Yeah. And it's, and one thing that I do find, and I tell people, don't put any shame on the give. Um, mm-hmm. If you don't have time, if you truly don't have time, or and quite honestly, if you just don't want to, <laughs> and you write a check, and you write a check of for five dollars is something don't put any shame on what you can give because you think it should be more just do something um because it all starts you know with a little bit of something and it rolls down and then you know yeah fall in love. it's great <laughs> that's such a good point too because i think mm-hmm. so many people it's like oh i don't like five dollars like and and mm-hmm. one of my other guests brought that up and especially when you start looking outside of the united states what five dollars mm-hmm. can buy it yes. is incredible but, right. you know, what if everybody gave $5 and what, what that would do? Yes. And I think that's the other thing too, is the more that we can talk about this and the more that we can normalize it, like, again, yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, one of these, you know, actors or movie stars where they're donating. Like we saw so many, you know, people donating, you know, $50,000, $500,000, a million dollars to like Hurricane Harvey in Houston and things like that. And I think sometimes people get into that comparison mode and it's like, yeah, I only have $5, I only have $25. Like mm-hmm. that isn't going to make a difference, but it totally does. It totally does. So yeah. yeah. 
That's great. That's great. So yeah. hopefully we've given our audience some things just to think about and, mm -hmm. um, you know, more importantly to get into action about, because that's, that's what it's about. You know, that's why I created this show is, you know, to help good people and big hearted people and people that really want to help change the world, mm -hmm. um, the strategies to not only grow their business, but also the ideas and the inspiration on different ways that we can help. So right. thank you for giving us so many of them. Oh, no problem. I love your show. <laughs> thank you. So when you think about, you know, everything that you're doing as a mom, as a business owner, as a wife, as, you know, a person that's involved in charities, um, mm -hmm. what do you feel like the big change is that you want to see made in the world? Oh my gosh, that's a huge one, Carrie. I know, right? <laughs> Whole other show. Stop, stop. <laughs> You know, you can simplify it. I, I know it's a big question. <laughs> um, geez. I, you know, it sounds so simple what I'm about to say. Um, I just want people to be kind. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that so many of the issues that we have in this world is at, would absolutely be not as horrible if we were more kind. If we just took the time to listen to each other, um, to appreciate people's differences, to allow people to be different and to voice those differences, to not um, take those differences as a personal slight against one another mm -hmm. and just be kind. And it's interesting, my favorite times in the world, unfortunately, are after a tragedy after hurricanes, mm -hmm. after terrorist attacks, after those really horrible instances, we see people coming out being kind. And I feel like it shouldn't take that kind of thing mm -hmm. to remind us how human we actually are and that we do love each other. It's, it, you know, just, can we just be kind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, you're almost making me tear up while we're talking about that. <laughs> Especially just because that hits really close to home because I am in mm -hmm. Texas and I grew up in Houston and I'm just mm -hmm. seeing the outpouring of love and generosity and, and um, understanding and, and just everything. Like you said, that's such a good point. And why do we have to wait for a tragedy? So, oh, right. that's, that would be a huge change. And I think you're right. Yes. It really would. Make a difference. So, wow. Yes. A good reminder. <laughs> Yes. Um, oh, I feel like I could talk to you for so much longer. So, um, well, I want to move into our lightning round. I know you're going to have okay. some amazing things to share with us here. So, okay. um, just, you know, quick answers, whatever comes off uh, the top of your head. Ah, scary. Okay. Yeah, you got to take it up there a little bit. Okay. <laughs> what is the um, best or one of the best pieces of advice, advice you've ever received? Um, be yourself and listen to your own voice. Ooh, I like it. Um, what is your favorite quote, mantra, or Bible verse? Oh God, um, Jesus, um, <laughs> I'm stuck on that. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. <laughs> um, what book would you recommend to our audience and why? Oh my gosh. The life changing magic of not giving a bleep, um, is really great. <laughs> really great. Check it out. Why so great? Tell us a little bit. <laughs> um, because it releases you from some of that pressure of, um, having to be, having to feel like you have to have it all together. Um, mm -hmm. we only have a certain amount of time and energy to, to devote to things and it really is okay to say no. Mm, love it. <laughs> and then last question. Um, what is one thing you do every day that helps you stay in forward motion for your mission and purpose? Every day, I actually spend a lot of time alone. I do it every morning. Um, it's, it's, I don't, I'm not even really doing anything, but every morning I get up, I like to spend at least 30 minutes by myself, thinking of nothing, doing nothing. Mm. And it really does um, give me the gist that I need to get up and perform. It's, it's weird because I'm not doing anything, but I just like the quiet. I like to just, you know, feel myself breathing and all that craziness mm, so important <laughs> and such a busy yeah. life you know that that's that's a good reminder so yeah well Reese, yeah. thank you so much I just I'm so glad that we found each other and you know I love the heart that you have um you know for 
for doing good in the world and yeah. for the the journey that you've been on to really find your your purpose and your passion and to be able to really be able to go bold, boldly out there and share that and the work that you're doing not only with you know your businesses but nonprofits and giving back is really making a difference and so I just thank you for sharing that with us and sharing your light with us and also for you know the strategies that you shared with our audience I think that's really going to make a difference for them and mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd love for you just to share with our audience where they can connect with you and find you because I know they're going to want to. <laughs> okay, I spend most of my days um, on Facebook. I, um, you can find me at Create Good Marketing. And um, I have a group on Facebook of Create Good Marketing for non-marketers, do-gooders, and I'm in there sharing tips. And um, as you mentioned earlier, I am in a book, an anthology coming out next week, A Woman's Work, so look for that on Amazon. <laughs> Fantastic. And we'll make sure we link all that up um, as well okay. as the book on where everybody can find that. So okay. thank you so much. Um, I hope you have a great day and thank you to our audience. You for too. Listening. Bye. Thank you. It was fun. Thanks. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Big Heart Business Show. If you know someone that could benefit from this information, I would so appreciate it if you shared the love and make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave a review. One last thing. If you're ready to fuel your big heart business with a consistent flow of cash and clients, head on over to carrieshepherd.com forward slash free gift to access a very special video series I created just for you. And don't forget, we are changing the world one big heart business at a time.